Hi, welcome to the AS Practicals Biology Laboratory. Uh, we study about diabetes and we know that uh, there is glucose tested in urine. How do we know who has what degree of diabetes? So that can be very well detected by the level of glucose. Now again, coming back to the testing of level of glucose, we need to find out in the experiment what concentration of glucose is present. In order to test the unknown samples of glucose, we have a setup for the experiment which has a lot of components as the apparatus. For testing the glucose concentration of unknown samples, this is what we have. G is the known glucose concentration. S1, sample 1, is an unknown sample. Another sample, S2, unknown sample. This is the Benedict's solution. This is the reagent that is used to test reducing sugar. And this is W, which is distilled water. Serial dilution is a range of dilutions in a very uh, systematic manner. So if you have a 4% concentration in the original sample, the next uh, dilution will be a 2%, that is a 50% and hence again the next one will be another 50% so we will go step by step and keep on diluting it uh, half its dilutions we're taking this beaker we'll need a syringe and we'll be needing distilled water i'm going to take 10 ml of g which is glucose there could be air bubbles in the syringe so a little tap would help release the air bubbles very important to be mindful about the volume. When you measure it, the upper line of the rubber should be in alignment to the measurement. Very important. In case you have any airspace, push the plunger in. And this is 10 ml. Now we pour this 10 ml here in this first beaker. In order to add distilled water to it, we make sure we take another syringe. Do not use the same syringe for distilled water. So in order to be uh, sure about it, we use this CD marker, this permanent marker and label it. Labeling this as W, which is going to be used only for water. And this is G, which is used for glucose sample. Now with this syringe, which is labelled W, I'm going to measure 10 ml of distilled water. You add to this. Now this is our first serial dilution. We need to label it. So if the G, the glucose was 4%, this becomes 2% of glucose. Similarly, now we will go for a second step of dilution where we will take 10 ml of 2% and add 10 ml of distilled water to a new beaker. So this dilution becomes 50% of 2% which is 1%. We go two steps ahead. So now our sample G and all the subsequent serial dilutions are ready. We have G which is 4%, then we have 2% solution, 1%, 0.5 and 0.25 solution. Apart from this, as you remember, we have S1 and S2 unknown glucose concentrations. And this is the Benedict's reagent which we are going to use to test the reducing sugar. So here are the test tubes in which we are going to test them. The test tubes are for S1, S2, G and the rest of the serial dilution. In each test tube, I'm going to add 2 ml of the glucose solution and 2 ml of Benedict's reagent. Using another syringe,
this is the beaker with the water every time you take another sample we wash the syringe with water so that no uh, remains of the previous solution are there so these are now the test tubes which have equal volume of sample to be tested with equal volume of benedict reagent so all of these test tubes are ready with the reagents to perform the benedict's test so the water bath setup is ready starting with g the moment you put the test tube in you press the uh, stopwatch you switch the clock on and you're going to keep a watch on the change of color the moment you see the change in color you're going to note that particular time the temperature is 80 degree and this is the ideal temperature for benedict test look at the color change so the color change is started to happen but we are recording the exact moment at which it happened to 5 having the least concentration of glucose and as we go up the concentration gradient the color changes if you look at the s1 and s2 the unknown samples they have got particular colors and you can use this range as a reference point to kind of check where they would lie so this is the second point of reference for us to know that these are the various colors which form as you know during the benedict reaction now after performing the test for each and every sample we've recorded the time taken and the table is complete now if you take a close look at the table you will see a pattern in the time taken and you can also use it to compare and find out the concentration of s1 and s2 which are the unknown samples while performing an experiment we uh, use various uh, various skills various tools in order to go through it and come to an inference serial dilution is one of those tools one of that set of skills which helps us perform the experiment hope learning about serial dilution has been interesting has been little fun and definitely has offered details now looking forward to seeing all of you in the lab very very soon